Hey guys, about to play round two here in this uh, Dragons of Tarkir draft. We won round one, uh, and we're going to try to win round two as well. And we would like to play first. Uh, hmm. I think I'm going to keep this hand. It gives us, you know, two bodies right away. We're going to get a mountain with this. Um, so we're going to keep it. It's not great, but we do have 18 lands in our deck. Um, granted, we're going to take one of them out, but... Chances are we draw another land, uh, you know, by the, by the time we need a third land. Uh, and anyway, we don't have uh, low drops either. Getting both our Delve guys is kind of annoying, but at least we have Evolving Wilds in this hand. I'm just going to do this now. Maybe it gives my opponent too much information, you know, if I get a Mountain, but whatever. Alright, if we get a land, that's not a land, so hopefully we can manage to get one uh, either next turn or the turn after. I mean, he's going to play a creature next turn and we can Foul Tongue Invocation it, which is, or Dows and Gloom it if we get our third land, uh, if he plays a creature. If he doesn't, then we have another turn, whole other turn to draw a land, but he's playing a creature, so, or so it appears. Maybe he's not. He's sending me a message. Ouch. Oh, maybe he's mana screwed. We are too, so we feel you, buddy. Error. <laughs> All right, well, we didn't draw a land, but we drew another dude. We can just get out there. And we still have time to play. If we draw our land now, we can kill whatever he plays and swing for three. Also gets us closer to playing out our Gurmag Angler, if we can get a land and play one of these things. Green-white. We did see quite a few nice cards for the green-white deck in this draft. <clears throat> Come on, deck. We're running 18 lands for a reason, so hook us up. 30 cards left, and 15 of them are land, so there's a 50% chance we draw land. Yeah, we need, we really want to be able to uh, Foul Tongue Invocation that, and we can't, uh, so that's frustrating. Um, I'm just going to swing with everything, and I'll probably Twin Bolt the dude uh, if he blocks, depending on what he blocks with. If he blocks a Goblin token, I'll Twin Bolt him. It's a one and a half for one, which isn't great, but we're going to fall behind. Okay, we're still going to fall behind pretty quickly then, probably. Uh since we just can't hit our third land. Hmm. I would guess he would swing. I would swing if I had his board state and he knew that I was mana and knew that my opponent was a little mana screwed. Yeah. And we're going to take it. Unfortunately for us. Now, if he can play it, if he plays something, we can kill with Twin Bolt, and then we can Foul Tongue Invocation again. Uh, then I'll be pretty happy. But chances aren't great of, about that happening. Hmm. If he plays nothing, I'm pretty happy too, because we can still Foul Tongue Invocation him, um, which I'd probably wait to do at his upkeep actually. Okay, well, we can Twin Bolt that. If that's all he's going to do here, I'm pretty happy. How much does this cost? Three to move the counter. Okay. So we're going to Twin Bolt that. Really got really to gotta draw our third way in now. And we did. So we're winners. That's what that means. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll make him wait at his upkeep, and we'll Foul Tongue Invocation him at his upkeep. Um it's an instant, so we can do that.
we'll also be pretty close to playing our angler. Actually, we will be able to play him next turn after we foul tongue, so that'll be nice. Delve is nice. Um, yeah, so we'll end. And now we're going to foul tongue invocation. Have him sacrifice his quartermasters. We don't have a dragon or one dragon in our hand, so we don't get to gain life. But I am happy with having the mana now to play out big bad ang big, big, big bad angler. If I could speak. Those have butcher's glee and dows and gloom, you know. Oh yeah. So we're gonna have to kill the Soulfire Grandmaster if you if you aren't uh, that probably doesn't surprise you, but I think that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, yeah, we can't really afford to do anything else. Um, I mean, he's not super broken here, but the lifelink is really annoying for us right now. Um, and we can remove him. I mean, it'll just make us take another turn to... What happens if I Tormenting Voice right now, though? If I Tormenting Voice, I put six cards in my graveyard. I can Tormenting Voice and Gurmag Angler, and that sounds pretty great. So I might do that and just say to hell with it with the Soulfire Grandmaster um, for now. Uh, just not worry about it. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's just that's just such a good turn. Um, of course, the question is, what do I discard with my tormenting voice? I think it's going to be the muck draggers. Yeah, it is. I mean, we're not probably not going to get to play both our delve guys this game. All right, and we got some good juice. And we'll play out our angler. And so that was a pretty nice turn, uh, drawing some extra cards. we got a Tail Slash now. We have so many ways to deal with that Grandmaster. I'm just going to pass our turn, though. Luckily for us, I mean, he's not going to have removal, uh, burn spells, and he also doesn't have the mana to pay for its ability. I got a little little scared about it, uh, thinking about uh, thinking I was playing Constructed, I guess. It's really, you know, here it's good, but it's, you know, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two lifelink. It's, it's not the end of the world for us. If he has lots of ways to put counters on it, which he probably does, it's kind of a problem. Um... But we can probably still take it down. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not too worried. This could be a dragon, a Megamorph dragon. I don't know what else it would be that he hasn't flipped it yet. Uh, could also be Segmented Croteek, who does, in fact, uh, cost a lot to flip. Um, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna swing with our angler. Even if it's a crow teak, we can butcher's glee. So he could also have a way to kill our angler, but we gotta risk it. I mean, if he does just kill our angler straight up here, we'll just play our summit prowler. Uh, if he flips up something big, okay. All right. So he does get to bolster now, uh, which is worth thinking about. Um, our angler dies. That spell has lifelink, so, okay, that's interesting that he chose to do that. Um, I could have saved him with, uh, Butcher's Glee, but I, since I have another pretty sizable threat in my hand, I, uh, I decided not to. Um, I'm just going to play out our Summit Prowler and pass. I mean, no matter what this is, we can actually kill it with our Tail Slash on our Typhoid Rats and hit this combo, uh, like, no matter how big it is. So. Yeah, that's going to be our plan. It is too bad he killed our Angler. Right, a monument is also pretty annoying. It makes me consider leaving mana up for Tail Slash, but I don't, I don't think I will. Um, I 
I am pretty curious what that morph is. Um, but we're just gonna we're gonna tail slash it right now. Uh, we want our typhoid rats to do the damage, and we'll do it to the morph. could he flip that would say I mean what could he do that would save the thing oh that'll do it yeah that's that sucks <laughs> all right yeah we did see that card going around all right we just passed turn now we got shown what was up he can start swinging with his monument which is not cool uh, next turn I'm gonna swing with summit prowler and I'm going to swing at everything next turn, uh, probably, and see see how things go for us. Be nice to draw into our flatten right about now, so we know we have a way to deal with his what looks like it's probably his win condition. Although I don't know what this is, it's got me pretty scared now. <laughs> uh, could be a crow ticket, could be a dragon. Um, neither of which is great news for us. So, yeah. All right, that's a big in. Another big in. Okay, well, we just have instance in our graveyard right now. But I still think I'm going to play my enforcers. Um, although maybe first... I think first I am going to swing with the Summit Prowler. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to Butcher's Glee if we have to. If he just takes it, then we're going to play out our Bloodfire Enforcers. Okay, we'll Butcher's Glee. Gives us a huge life point swing too, which could be important later in this game. Did we exile all of our sorceries? Tormenting Voice and Dragon Fodder. We still have Defeat somewhere in our library. <laughs> that could potentially make this guy better. I kind of forgot that we want those in our graveyard for him. Another morph. Alright, he's nice to see. Um, I think we just play our own morph and pass the turn. Yep, that's the plan. I wonder what this is that he hasn't flipped it up. I mean, it's got to be massive. I mean, it'll get a plus one, plus one when it flips, too. So maybe it's a Sandstorm Charger. Is that what we're about to see? No, we're about to see. So he does have lots of ways to put plus one, plus one counters on things. And he does have a Dromoka Monument, which isn't cool. Isn't good news for us, anyway. This Iron Shaman's going to be nice, though. This Typhoid Rats is really holding him back, too, so that's good. It's been down there since very early. Okay, what is this? I don't know. Oh, it's our Ire Shaman. Um, shoot.
I don't think I'm gonna pay the mana because if it's like something I can't play, it'll be really, it'll be really crappy. So now this guy's big, just getting bigger and bigger. His hand's empty though, but he does have a Dramoka monument, so <laughs> his hand being empty isn't quite as good as it looks. Okay, that is gonna hurt. I'm gonna take ten if he swings right now, and he is. Man, he was really biding his time putting counters on that dude. Okay. Hmm. So if I douse and gloom one of these guys out of the way now, and it would probably be the one with lifelink. He can hit me for 13 this turn. Uh, oh, he's also got his freaking in that. Uh, so he can hit me for 10. He can kill me next turn, no matter what, actually. Oh, except for Dows and Gloom can save me a little bit of life. So I think I'm just going to douse now. That's what we have to do to try to survive. I'm going to douse Guardian Shield Bearer. Hope he doesn't draw another way to make, uh, to token up. And we'll swing for five. And hope we draw our dragon. <laughs> I think we're in trouble almost no matter what now. Yep. Gains him a little life back. Would have been nice if we had the mana to also play out our Bloodfire Enforcers, but we just don't. So, And we had to gain life so if we wanted to even survive another turn. What happens if we draw Vault Breaker. Like, if he swings with both and we draw Vault Breaker, we win. So that's pretty nice. I mean, if he doesn't have it, that's if he doesn't have a creature in his hand. Uh, we have two Vault Breakers. So, same if we draw Ambuscade Shaman, we just win. Uh, he may not swing with everything, though. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. He's probably, he'll wait until he can kill us. Which is smart. Yeah, that's painful. Well, we did draw Embuscade Shaman, uh, but it's not going to save us. Um, I'm going to play it out there on the off chance my opponent doesn't realize he can activate his monument. That, you know, we have lethal on the table, so. Yeah, he's going to, he'll activate his monument and survive. So, yeah, we scoop. Game two, it is. Man, that tail slash that got indestructible in response was pretty brutal. Pretty game breaking, I, uh, man. Um, what do we want here? That big flyer is super annoying, and so is the monument. I guess I might want another flyer in the deck as a finisher, like because clearly, like that's one of his main strategies to win. So we'll take out a muck dragger and put in a scion. Uh, yeah, I mean, that really came down to just not drawing the mana. Like, if we had played, been able to play the 5-2 in our hand um, and Dows and Gloom that turn, it would have been nice, but we just couldn't do it. So, um, yeah, we'll go with this. I don't think there's much else I could do against him. I mean, maybe Tazigar's Cruelty is nice against him. But I don't, I mean, he does, you know, he, he does have that instant speed, make your dudes with plus one, plus one counters indestructible card, but... I've just got to play around it, I guess. I would like to play first. We have an awful hand. We do have removal, but we have six lands. So we're going to mow. That's a lot better. That's that's a really good hand, actually. I mean, we've got an early hand of Silumgar and ways of killing, like, absolutely everything uh, early. Um, so we're probably going to be swinging for some damage with our hand, which is nice.
All right, we got some more lands. Last game, I forgot, we kind of were in a situation where it looked kind of kind of iffy on our lands for a while. So considering we started as slow as we did, we did pretty well. See what we see. Okay. I'm going to have Foul Tongue Invocation. We have so much other removal, and like neither of them could deal with that. It kind of sucks using the Foul Tongue Invocation on a thing like that, but it's okay. We want him to play Morphs now, because we can just eat them up with our... And we know he has them, so we can eat them up with our defeats and our twin... Our defeat and our twin bolt. And just keep swinging and hopefully draw into something a little more threatening than our hand. All right. Well, we're drawing more lands. Um, I think in this case, I'm going to use defeat. He's stuck on two lands, which is good for us. Um... We've almost emptied our hand, though, is the bad news, because we can't draw anything. We haven't drawn anything that's not a land yet this game, so. All right, he, he hit his land. He'll probably play Morph. Ah, oh, no, that guy. That guy's a problem. That makes him a little less of a problem. Um, I'm just going to swing. And hold up Twin Bolt. It'd be nice to see some of our other creatures show up. Our opponent seems to be stuck on three lands. I'm guessing he swings here. It's much like the last game, actually, except I think I had a Typhoid Rats. No, he decided not to swing. Could have Sandblast or something like that. All right, well, that's a... Uh... Tormenting Voice is nice, but I don't really want to discard either of the cards that are in my hand. Um, we're just going to swing. If he just takes it again, great. Uh, if he has Sandblast or something, less great. All right, if he wants to block, then we're going to go ahead and Butcher's Glee. Now he's going to Sandblast. Ah, that thing again. Well, we got it out of his hand and we gained life this time. So, it's not too bad. He is using that pretty well against us, though, making us use up cards and then drawing cards uh, in the meantime. Kind of open I top deck a land just so I can Tormenting Voice and discard something that's not that valuable. I mean, obviously, I'd be happy to draw like a good spell, too. All right, we're going to Twin Bolt that. It was a Guardian Shield Bearer, not the big scary Sun Striker, unfortunately for us. All right, we did top deck a land, uh, so we're going to Tormenting Voice, discard. And that's pretty nice. Um... Especially if he keeps not being able to play creatures. Although I guess he's played creatures. He's just... Um, we finally got a second creature, which is nice. We've just killed a lot of them. All right, he's at four lands now, which isn't great news. We do get to draw two cards next turn if our Iron Shaman survives. He may hunt the weak something now, though. All right, uh, yep, man. Our Iron Shaman, two games in a row, has been hunted. Just pretty brutal. All right, he's nice to draw though. 
This hand of Silmgar is doing all the work. I'm going to hold this land in my hand just to, uh, which one do I want to, I'd rather, I guess I'd rather pretend I have Coat with Venom. That would be better right now than the other one, than Kindled Fury. Now he's getting his lands, which is bad for us. But we could draw an Angler or one of our two Dragons right now, and we'd be pretty happy. Even something like Vault Breaker would be really nice. Our opponent is deep in thought. I'm sure he has lots of different things he can do, but he probably has an Enduring Victory or something. Oh yeah, Strong Arm Monk is pretty brutal. All right, Tail Slash is just great. It's hard to decide what I want to Tail Slash here, though. I think I'm going to swing with the hand. Like, it'd be pretty sweet if we could get him to block, and then we can Tail Slash. Um, I could also attack with both. And then, but the Summit Prowler is going to die, like, no matter, even if I Tail Slash something. So I think I'm just going to attack with the hand. I kind of doubt he blocks, um, so maybe tail slashing and swinging would have been better, but, you know, whatever. All right, yeah, he takes it. And while he's untapped, I'm just going to go for the tail slash. Uh, and we will go here. Some more tail slashes would be nice for a big dragon. I think he has Enduring Victory, and he's, like, trying to decide whether it's worth it for him to um, tap out uh, or use his Enduring Victory, or keep man up for Enduring Victory. Um, so if I were to swing with both, this guy would become a 4-4. Four, four. Is it other creatures? It's just all creatures. Um, there's no reason to swing with both. We're just going to swing with our fodder. He's probably got Enduring Victory, so if he wants to use it on that guy, then I'm all right with that. I don't love it, but I'm all right with it. I also have Dragon Fodder tokens to, like, chump block uh, to also play around the Enduring Victory. And Enduring Victory. Oh, Channel Harm. That's pretty nice. He's going to prevent all the damage. Dang. So he can kill my own Summit Prowler with my uh, Hand of Silumgar's redirected damage. I think that'll work. It's still death touch damage. He... No, I made it do it to himself. Okay. Well, we're going to get some goblins and we're going to end our turn. Come on, big flyers. I sided you in for a reason. Well, I sided one in. The other's just in my deck. Show up, man. Yeah, Channel Harm. That's a card that I've never really wanted to... Oh, Glaring Aegis. I was talking about how that's a pretty good card. It's about to prove itself by making a Strong Arm Monk pretty massive. Uh, 
I also just going to tap down my Yeti. Or, yeah, Prowler. It is a Yeti, but it, I was thinking it's called Summit Yeti. That's just its creature type. Now, what's he doing? Mastery of the Unseen. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have passed that, huh? Yeah, it's going to be hard to beat. May have been the guy to our left. We have seen a number of cards that we saw, like this Strong Arm Monk and this Glaring Aegis and this Mastery of the Unseen. So. His hand's empty, but his Mastery of the Unseen makes it so it doesn't really matter that his hand's empty. He can just manifest a creature every turn and gain life while he does it. All right, Vault Breaker. I think I'm just going to play as a creature. I'm not going to dash him. I mean, if I get to swing with him next turn, that's cool. Uh, I mean, if I swung with everything right now, he would have just taken two, um, and he may, would have had to, or, or six, and just yeah. So I don't think it was worth it. Hopefully, our vault breaker can draw us into something that can help get us out of the situation. I mean, Master of Unseen isn't completely unbeatable. It's it's hard to beat, but it's not unbeatable. I've beaten it before. Um, It would be nice to draw something like uh, Flatten that could help us deal with the Strong Arm Monk. Uh, and our Vault Breaker could just like smash into it and then draw us a card in the process. And he didn't. Uh, problem is now, I mean, he's going to start Master of the Unseening every turn. Um, but if we do swing with Vault Breaker, like unless we draw something that's going to help us, he's just going to kill it. So I don't really know if it's worth it. Um, it's probably not. We're just going to pass the turn. I'll play I'll play one of the lands in my hand. No reason not to. And then we'll end our turn. So now he's going to get a, ma a manifest dude. Or flip this or any number of things that aren't good for us. Oh, I think he's flipping. Yeah, and he gains two life. Yeah, this isn't looking great for us. We got off to a nice start, but we just couldn't draw creatures early enough to really take advantage of when we were just blowing up everything he did. It's still not unwinnable, but it's definitely going to be hard to win. Yeah, I'll throw a goblin in front of that. desperation we're gonna have to swing with our vault breaker Which sucks but hey who knows maybe we draw into a trick of some kind although we've already played our butcher's glee and eh. all we're drawing our lands now so this is gonna be a hard one to win Overpowered by a strong arm monk and mastery of the unseen. I'm trying to think if there's really any way we can even like stabilize right now, and I don't think there is. I mean, this is such an engine, uh, and he's gaining life when he unmorphs things. I mean, he could just win right now, depending on what he has in his hand. So I should probably just scoop and save you guys. Yeah, I'm scooping. Scooped. Save you guys a little time. We lost round two. One round one. Uh, we'll go into round three and hope to go two and one here. So thanks for watching.